Hey everyone, today we're going over lipid oxidation, which is a huge set of reactions that start when unsaturated fatty acids are being broken down. But we're going to go through it step by step so you have no worries. Okay, so we are going to use oleic acid in our example of lipid oxidation, and I already have it drawn here. And we'll start at the first step in lipid oxidation, which is called initiation. Now in initiation, a hydrogen gets taken from the fatty acid. For oleic acid, the possible hydrogens that can get taken from say, um, single oxygen or a reactive oxygen species, some type of radical would be these ones in blue because they are adjacent to this double bond. And the double bond is electron rich, which makes it easier to take these two hydrogens off. So there's only two options for the hydrogens that will be abstracted from this molecule. So in initiation, what you'll see is we'll lose a hydrogen and we can make one molecule by saying this hydrogen is removed. And where that hydrogen is removed, it becomes a radical right there. And then keep going. We still have that hydrogen. This one did not get removed this time. All right, so we could get that, but another option, if we take off, whoops, this hydrogen this time, using a radical or some reactive species, we would get a slightly different molecule after initiation. This hydrogen would still be here this time. Double bond. This one got abstracted, so that's a radical there. So there are two options. These both could happen from oleic acid after initiation. Now, each of these molecules is able to isomerize. So this, um, you could form a double bond here. So this radical could go here, this electron here, and one electron for the double bond here. So let me show you what these could isomerize to. It should become a little more clear once I draw it. hydrogen still there just to show you. So what I mean is uh, electron, electron from this double bond, you kind of swing here and we can um, have this isomer where the double bond is here. This molecule can also summarize and do the same thing. We'll just keep drawing this hydrogen in. Now there's extra one electron, lone pair electron there because the double bond swung down here. So now here's the isomer of this first product if it was made, but if the other hydrogen got abstracted, it could now isomerize to this. All right, let's move on to step two. So step two is propagation which means it keeps going and going and going. And in propagation, basically you have um, triplet oxygen added to one of these radicals and that makes a hydroperoxide. So this would look something like this. Say, let's start with this molecule and we'll add triplet oxygen. What triplet oxygen is gonna do is add itself right where this uh, free electron is, okay? So it'll actually add right to that carbon, but let's draw that out. All right, oops, just two oxygens for now, and sorry, it has 
it will have a free, uh, an extra electron right there. Then let's finish this. And this is just same as usual. So all it did was add the oxygen there. Um, say if we want me to do it with this molecule too, we could see what this will look like. Let's add triple oxygen. Again, this triple oxygen is gonna add itself right there that time. So let's see if I can draw this a little cleaner. So it'd be right here and free electron. Then we just need to finish the structure. Okay, so what we have here, these are called um, hydro, or sorry, peroxyl radicals. Now, the problem with peroxyl radicals is that this, elect this free electron, this lone pair electron is really good at taking off a hydrogen from another fatty acid, from another unsaturated fatty acid. So if we have peroxyl radicals, if it finds, say, another, another, rat, another unsaturated fatty acid, let's just make another oleic acid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Double bond. So what this peroxyl radical can do is it's going to be really easy for this peroxyl radical to now attack another unsaturated fatty acid and take one of these hydrogens. And that's why it's called propagation, because we made one fatty acid into a peroxyl radical, but now it's going to make another unsaturated fatty acid into another radical. So it's just going in circles. We're making more and more radicals. So let's say this peroxyl radical, it did take, say, say this. What we'd get is called a hydroperoxide, and it would look something like this. OOH. So we got rid of the radical there. And again, this is a hydroperoxide. But the problem is, like I said, this guy, this oleic acid is now a, is going to have a radical. It's an alkyl radical. So we could put it here. Let's take that one. Double bond. We'll keep that hydrogen there. So now this is going to react with an oxygen species, right? So that's what I mean by propagate. It keeps, it will keep going in circles. Now, step three in lipid oxidation is called termination. And this is how certain molecules can sort of end this um, sort of end propagation. And how this happens is two radicals basically come together. So here I have our oleic acid, but it is a radical, right? These hydrogens were abstracted. So in termination, what would happen is these would form a bond right here. And this, this step is called annealing. So the structure is a little tricky, but let's draw it out. So here's where we're gonna join the two. Here's where that double bond is. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, All right, then we need to draw the other one. I should put these a little closer, but basically they'll they'll connect there. I just moved, I didn't draw them close enough, but that's, that's fine. I have a double bond. 18. So it would look something like this, right? So, so where these lone pair electrons were is where you get this bond. And this is called termination because we, we did not generate any more radicals at this step. 
Now, one other reaction I want to talk about is beta scission. And basically, this shows how these hydroperoxides or other larger molecules we generate in lipid oxidation, how they finally decompose into smaller molecules. And it's these low molecular lower weight molecules that actually end up making our food have off flavors and aromas. So this sort of explains how we go from hydroperoxides to smaller molecules. Now, I'm still continuing with our oleic acid example. I just picked um, one of the hydroperoxides we, we made during the um, propagation step. So what happens to this? This is a hydroperoxide. Um, there's a couple ways, but specifically with um, reacting with a transition metal in the Fenton reaction, what happens is it actually gets cleaved there, which gives us a pretty reactive molecule. So let me draw that out for you. So now we just have an oxygen with the electron there because it took the OH. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Perfect. So this is an alkoxyl radical, and these are extremely, extremely reactive. They are unstable. And what this radical can do is it can take a hydrogen from either carbon to carbon bond on either side of it. So it could take it from over here on this side, or it could be over here and take that hydrogen. What that, that means more specifically is this molecule can be cleaved on either side of this oxygen radical. It could be cleaved on this side right there, or it could be cleaved on this side right there. So let's say we cleave it on this sort of, on the side where the carboxylic acid end is. Let's cleave it right here for now and see what um, breakdown products we get. So cleave, see oh, the carboxylic acid end, just to keep track, we're cleaving this side. So we're gonna end up with two different products, right? If it breaks right here. So let's start with our carboxylic acid. And sometimes it's helpful to number the important carbons. So this would be seven, eight, nine, ten, just to keep track of them when you're you're drawing these breakdown products. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now what happens here at carbon seven is this electron is actually donated there. So it ends here at carbon seven with that lone pair electron. So now we just have to draw the other breakdown product. And like I said, this alkoxyl radical, it steals a hydrogen from either side. So what we actually end up with, so this would be carbon eight, nine, 10. So I just want to make sure all my carbons add up because this was 18 carbons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Perfect. Now this molecule is pretty unstable. What would probably happen is it would take, it would abstract a hydrogen from some other unsaturated fatty acid. So we can draw it. It would probably end just like this. So these two molecules are our beta scission products when it's cleaved on the carboxylic acid end. Now instead, let's say we cleave it at the methyl end or the methyl side, I guess I should say. So that's right here. We're gonna cleave it between eight and nine right now. So why I'm showing you this is because the products you get will be different. So let's start on the carboxylic acid. So this will actually have our oxygen here and it'll grab a hydrogen. 
So carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is carbon eight. Carbon eight right there. And then what else would we get from this other side? So this time this electron is donating this way. So we'll have something like this. So this is carbon nine, carbon 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Now, again, this molecule will probably react with something. Um, we can say it reacts with another radical and it might end, you know, something like this. So this will be our carbon nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So, so these products are different than the other two because we can cleave it on both sides of this, on this oxygen, which explains with Bay Decision, you can get a lot of different decomposition products, right? A whole slew of different low molecular weight products.